Hey everybody, Alec Oryx here with a quick update on Escape from Tarkov Arena. This morning, BSG tweeted out some balancing changes for a lot of the presets in Arena. We are going to go through those really quickly. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. It's totally free. Leave a like on the video and let me know what your favorite class has been since the arena wipe down in the comments below i'm curious to see what you guys think all right let's jump into the video starting off we have guard guard has lost their stack of 762 by 39 us ammo from their inventory and added one sks 20 round magazine to the inventory instead a lot more ease of use don't have to carry around spare ammo to load a mag i don't know of anyone who is actually even really doing that now you have the two backup mags three mags total those are the only changes for guard everything else remained the same moving along to ratnik here the only change that ratnik endured was having the armor durability reduced from 100% to 80%. So now you are jumping in with a little bit of weaker armor. And if you go and look here, you can see that it is a tier three armor. So that is now starting at 80%. So a little bit less tanky for Ratnik. All right, moving right back up to Bark Eater here. The only change for Bark Eater is that they have removed the RGD5 hand grenade. So everything is remaining the same minus your frag grenade that is now missing. So BSG doubling down on the removal of frag grenades in the game, as you'll see once we go through more of these class changes. We scroll down here and look at Leary for those of you in tier two. Leary has also lost his frag grenade. Again, doubling down on the frag grenade removal. Personally, I do like the fact that they are removing more frag grenades from the game. They hit a weird balance, in my opinion, where... I shouldn't even use the word balance, but they removed so many hand grenades that the people who did have the hand grenades stood out a little bit more as being powerful in that regard and not really taking away from them to make up for it. So I do like that they're taking away more frag grenades and they're just putting them around on the map for people to find. Um, all right, moving along to Chappie. Chappie has lost his AFAC, so his 400 health AFAC, for an IFAC instead. Additionally, the Haka has been replaced by a Thor, and the Thor is at 70% armor durability. And if we go back here, we can see that the Thor armor inserts are simply the Aramid inserts. And again, that is at 70% durability. So a little less tanky, a little less healing, balancing them out with the rest of the preset tier. All right, moving along to Knuckles here. Knuckles increased the MBSS plate carrier durability from 75 to 90%, so a little bit more tanky on this. You can take a couple more rounds. Also improve the AK-105 build, adding the PK-06 sight. In my opinion, makes this class way, way, way better. I already thought Knuckles was decent. A lot of people disagreed with me. I think his weapon is quite strong. The 105s, the 102s, those AK series weapons are very powerful. The only real detriment to his class was that he had iron sights, and that does not gel with a lot of people. So now he's a sight on there. I think you're going to see him a lot more in the field. All right, so we move along to Raider here. And on Raider, we are replacing the JMAC Customs RRD4C muzzle brake with the SRVV MBR jet muzzle brake for the AKS 74UB. For those of you who do not know, that just basically means a little bit less recoil reduction on the gun. I will go ahead and put up the comparative stats on the screen so you can see those together. We also replaced the Aimpoint H2 sight with the Hollow Sun sight on top. In my opinion, a little bit of a better sight for me. Some people might disagree. It's really going to come down to personal preference, but I think that's a decent balance for this weapon. All right, next we're going to look at Section 8. The only changes they made to Section 8 were the added Leopold Delta Point sight on the shotgun. So it is no longer iron sighted. It does have an actual sight on the rail mount here. I do wish they had touched Section 8 a little bit more. Maybe they will do this in future updates. I believe section eight is a little bit too tanky and with the level three face shield just a little bit too tanky for the tier one presets that they're going up against granted section eight does have a shotgun however when you are shooting piranha out of that shotgun it is pretty powerful itself i think that section eight and Merca, for that matter are walking tanks and they need to tone them down just a little bit let me know if you agree in the comments about that i'm curious to see what you guys think all right so moving right along to bustleman on Bustleman, they replaced the leather cap with the Diamond Age Neo Steel helmet with 100% armor durability. So just making him a little bit more tanky. He's got his helmet here. If we go out and take a look, 
uh, you can see that you have level three armor in that helmet. Nice little upgrade to Bustleman, get him a little bit tankier, which is nice sustainability for gunfights. You do have to stick in the gunfight a little bit more, so it is nice always to have a little bit more durability. Nothing wrong with that. All right, moving along to Scout, we're going to take a look at Plantain. Replace the 6B2 Flora Vest with the Cora Coulon Vest with 75% armor durability so if we pop back out here we can see the level armor that we have in here level three armor inserts and the sp8 survival machete was replaced with this bayonet i'm not sure why they found the need to do this but there's a bayonet now so there you go all right moving along from plantain we have the man that i don't know how to pronounce let me know how to say it in the comments so for now i'm going to call him gender me let's go with that one this time so on him, you have the replaced Diamond Age Neo Steel helmet with the leather cap. So he went ahead and traded that out with Bustleman. This is actually quite a big change for this class. Now, this is coming from somebody who has played a lot of this class. The amount of headshots dinked with the power that the UMP brings is pretty powerful. I am not surprised they made this change. It does make me a little bit sad because I do play this class a lot in tier one. However, it is what it is. I will just have to dodge more bullets. They also removed the flashlight from the pistol, which is unfortunate because I also like to throw the flashlight from the pistol over onto the UMP, which is probably the reason that they removed it because they don't want the UMP to have the flashlight. So bit of a nerf here makes sense. This class is a total powerhouse. So I think it's a decent balancing change on their end, maybe a little bit too much, but I think it's pretty reasonable. All right, moving right along to Tikon. Clone so Tikon replaced his armor vest with a Paka armor vest with 100% durability, so a little bit of a downgrade on the armor. Moving back up here to Handler, reduced the Thor vest durability from 75% to 50%, which really just strikes me as them wanting to nerf the free classes a little bit more. You have the 30 round mags here, a decent fire rate, and pretty decent ammo for a free class. He was just a little bit too tanky, so I understand why they toned it down a little bit. All right, so getting out of this and scrolling down to tier two, we have Pointer. They removed the RGD5 frag grenade. Makes sense. Pointer is very strong. You also have the frag grenade was a little bit over the top. Going down to tier three, they did the same thing with Chopper, where they have removed the RGD5 frag grenade. Now we are moving back up here to Vitiaz. Vitiaz has lost the GP25 accessory kit recoil pad from his PP19, and the Wartech plate carrier was reduced from 75 to 40% durability. This one, I'm not sure why they decided to nerf the armor that much. I do understand a slight nerf to this. This class is pretty strong in the tier one preset. However, I don't know they needed to do them that hard. So if you are a VTS player, just be aware that you will be tanking less bullets. All right, for champion, we replace the Aimpoint Pro site with the Walter MRS site for the STM. So just a different site on top. Try it out yourself. See if you like it. It's going to come down to aesthetics. I personally am more of a fan of that Aimpoint site over the Walter MRS site. The MRS site, a little wobbly for my taste. However, others might like it. I don't think it's really a big change. I think Champion is still going to be a fairly decent pick. Moving along to Forlone. Forlone. We have removed the NC Star Blue Laser from the 9A, removed the Sound Suppressor from the 9A, and replaced the 9x39 FMJ ammo with SP5GS for all 9A magazines. So we lost all of our attachments, but we gained a little bit better ammo. Still no sight on it. Not really the gun for me, but if you're a Poralon player that doesn't care too much about the attachments, then there you go. Consider that a slight buff. Going out here and jumping over to Marksman, we're going to take a look at Cowboy. Cowboy has added the BNTI Module 3 Invest with 60% armor durability. So there you go, just a bit tankier. Cowboy definitely needed this. This guy just dropped dead at the sight of anybody, so I'm glad they added that to him. We scroll down just a little bit here and take a look at Ranger. Ranger added the Interceptor OTV Vest with 100% armor durability and removed the F1 Frag Grenade. So again, continuing the trend of removing everybody's frags and armoring up the Marksman classes just a little bit. Good change there. I have a feeling that Marksman is the least played at the moment. That's just from conversation and anecdotal evidence from talking to people and just seeing people on the field. They are making them a little bit more viable. We're also going to scroll down just a little bit more and take a look at Deratizer. Deratizer got the Paka with 60% durability. Only change there. Then we come all the way down to tier three. It is likely that you guys have not quite gotten to this point yet, but if you were curious, he did lose his F1 frag grenade. 
Yeah, that is the only change with click. All right, if we jump out here and go to collection, we can take a look at deputy. He changed the class from CQB over to assault. That, of course, also means that the CQB class medicine kit is also replaced with the assault class medicine kit. That is the only change with deputy. Nothing changed with his kit. All right, so those are all the class changes that have been implemented. These are live in the game now, as you can see. Also, BSG is unlocking tier three. That's going to be March 7th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. They will all become available for matchmaking. However, keep in mind that you do still need to have five presets unlocked in tier three to be able to play it just the same as you would for Tier 2. Note that when you are first queuing for Tier 3, if you're doing it early on, the same thing will happen that happened in Tier 2, where you will likely have longer wait times, and who you get matched against might not be as balanced as it would be in the lower tiers, so you may run into players of much higher rank, much lower rank. I'm sure for the first few days, there's not going to be a ton of people in Tier 3. I myself will have Tier 3 unlocked very shortly. I almost have my fifth Tier 3 class unlocked. I'm sure there are decent handful of people who already have their tier threes unlocked. I spent a lot of time unlocking a lot of tier ones. If you are interested in jumping into tier three, you can do that tomorrow. And speaking of ARP matching, just to throw it into this video as well, while we we're talking about updates, BSG did also put out a tweet yesterday explaining that there is an increased change of ARP reward and loss after a match, depending on the difference in average ARP between teams. The greater the difference, the more the team with a lower average ARP will receive in case of victory and the less they will lose in case of defeat. And vice versa, the greater the difference, the less the team with a higher average ARP will receive in case of victory and the more they will lose in case of defeat. A very obvious development in their ranked system. Hopefully they keep adjusting this and tweaking it so that it is a little bit more balanced and dynamic. So a step in the right direction there. I've already experienced cases where I have lost a little bit less ARP for a loss and actually where I've gained a little bit less for a win. So really good stuff there. Anyway, that is everything that I have for you guys. Those are all the updates in the game as of current. Remember, if you like seeing this content and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can always be alerted when I put out new videos. It's totally free to click. Let me know your thoughts on these down below in the comments. I love reading them. I will respond to as many as I possibly can. If you want to see me play live and play some games with me, I'm live on Twitch a few days during the week. Mondays and Thursdays always, and then sometimes in between. You can get notified that here on YouTube, or I also notify everybody on Discord. That's my little spiel at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until the next one, peace.